Hello, I would like to tell you about an interesting incident that happened to me. My name is David and I am 36 years old. This incident happened four years ago during a business trip. As I was traveling through a deserted forest in the late afternoon, a girl who was hitchhiking appeared in front of me. Since I also had two bags with me, I immediately stopped and told her where I was going. The girl asked me if I could take her home since her house was nearby. I agreed and took her into my car. When I asked her why she was still out there at this time, she said that she was scared of the dark and couldn't make it home. Fortunately, I was able to take her to the address she wanted. However, as soon as I was about to say that we had arrived, I turned back to the back seat and was shocked to find that the girl was no longer there. While pondering how this could have happened, I drove towards the address and rang the doorbell. A middle-aged woman opened the door and I told her that I had come across a young girl on the road who said that her house was located here. The woman said yes. I know and when I asked how that was possible, she explained that every Friday evening, different people would come to her house with a similar story. The truth was that the girl had died in a car accident on her way back from school on a Friday evening. Since then, she had been hitchhiking every Friday evening to return home, but never actually made it back. The man had seen a picture of the girl on the wall just before leaving the house, and realized that the girl he had given a ride to was wearing the same clothes as the girl in the picture. This happened multiple years back when I was around the age of 11. I was an only child. And back then my family only had one car, which my dad would usually take to work each weekday. This man anytime my mom had to go somewhere while he was at work, she would either have to walk or hitchhike. Now, it should be mentioned that back then hitchhiking was a lot more socially acceptable. Plus, at the time we lived in a decently small town, where for the most part everyone knew everyone. From what I can recall this took place on a Thursday. My dad had dropped off my mom and I had the grocery store on his way to work. This of course meant we would have to find a ride back home. Though we've done this many times before and never had any issues. Only a couple of minutes into our walk back home, a driver pulled up next to us willing to give us a ride. It was some guy in a white pickup truck we'd never seen before. He told us to get in the back. And we did. My mom started giving him directions to our home from the highway. But it honestly looked like the guy was just ignoring her. And when we came to our exit, this was confirmed as he straight up drove right past it. Like I then went on to explain how he had to make a quick detour first. This was extremely unnerving. But after a while, we came up to a farm, the driver took out the keys and told us to wait in the car and disappeared. My mom clearly didn't know what to do. I mean, we couldn't just leave, we were in an unfamiliar area in the middle of nowhere. A few minutes later, and the driver came back. But now with the second guy, the guy looks at us and starts flipping out screaming at the driver. Now, I'm not sure if this is exactly what was said. But this is what I can remember. The guy screams at the driver that he shouldn't have brought someone with a child, and that there's no way anything can happen now. From what I recall more things along those lines were said, but like I just mentioned, I can't remember exactly. The driver then got back in the truck and apologized to us. My mom would sternly tell the man to take us back to where he picked us up. She technically hadn't given him our address yet. And for obvious reasons now did not want that information known. The drive back was done in complete silence. Looking back, my mom and I can both agree that the purpose for that stuff was not as innocent as a simple detour. We honestly see ourselves as lucky for making it out of that situation. We lived in that town for five years after that and never once saw those two guys again. So this was told to me by an old family friend Nikki numerous times as a kid growing up as one of those life advice stories to keep in mind through the years that to her credit, I've never forgotten it. Whenever anything associated with hitchhiking comes up, 
It always springs to mind and probably always will. He even makes me a bit ill whenever I think about it, actually. So Nikki, who grew up at the same time as my dad, so this was about early 80s. I believe. She was a young woman in her mid-twenties. She's one of those real kind-hearted souls always willing to help another out at a time of need, you know, and I can't imagine her being anything other than that when she was younger, so I totally see her doing this too. So driving into the city, which was about a two-hour drive from town, she saw a man walking down the side of the road. As she neared, he turns and in typical hitchhiker, manner stuck out the old arm and thumb. Nikki, bless her heart, pulled over and asked him if he needed any help. She told me he was really polite, if not a bit shy when he asked for a lift into the city. Nikki gave a smile and Pop opened the passenger door for the guy who then tossed his bag into the back seat and buckled up for the ride ahead. They talked pleasantly for most of the trip about friends, the news, etc. You know how the small talk. She felt that they were getting along very well and even bought him dinner at the pit stop a little over halfway there. She says he seemed really flustered and awkward when she paid. But one of the things they talked about was money and how he was pretty damn strapped for cash, which was why he was hitchhiking in the first place. But he eventually relented and they went on their way. As soon as they got into the city, he thanked her profusely for the ride and the food and asked to be dropped off once they hit downtown. Before getting out, he asked for Nikki's phone number so we could contact her one day and maybe catch up. Thrilled at the prospect of knowing how her new friend was faring, Nikki wrote it down for him and drove off with a warm feeling of having done a good deed. Now I'm sorry if you were expecting something creepy to have happened by now, but I think this is what freaked me out so much as a kid. How nice everything seemed to have worked out. Nikki gets this crease in her forehead and a funny look in her eye when she tells me this next part. How a week later she got a phone call from the same man she had picked up. He didn't let her get a word in edgewise after hello and told her that she should thank God that she was raised so nice because when he first got in the car, he was planning on raping and murdering her once they got to that pit stop that he was going to steal the car and dump her body in a ditch further down the road and go on his merry way. But after she talked with him so kindly and even treated him to dinner with a smile on her face, he couldn't bring himself to do it. He didn't think that he could live with himself after doing that to such a nice lady. The man's final words on the phone were, please, Nikki, please never ever pick up another hitchhiker. Then he hung up the phone. Nikki never got a call from him again. When she tried redialing the number, she got a payphone, and so I've learned one important thing from this story that I'm going to take that man's advice and never ever pick up a hitchhiker.